If you want to get the most out of 3D printing, the right companion app can make a real difference. So today, we check out some of the best. Mobile apps at times can be completely superfluous, but when they are good, they can really increase the enjoyment and productivity of your related hobby. So how can we use them to accentuate 3D printing? Let's work our way through some categories and find out. To be included in this video, each app had to satisfy three qualifying criteria. The first is self-explanatory. It has to be useful for 3D printing or making. And secondly, it had to be available for both iOS and Android. That did narrow down available options quite a bit, but should mean that almost everyone watching this video has something they can try if they want to. Finally, it was important that each app had some sort of functional free version. As you'll see, a lot of these apps have a donation tier or in-app purchase that unlocks more functionality, but all of them work well enough for you to get a good idea before you spend any money. Let's move on, and our first category is 3D file management. And really what I mean by this is a way to search for files to print on your phone. Previously, I made this video, linked in the description, comparing several of the most popular 3D model repositories. Each of these websites was compared in terms of features and functionality, but from the point of view of using them on a desktop device. In that context, the best site depended on the needs of each individual, so there wasn't a clear winner. But in my opinion, things change when you're working on a phone, because most likely, you're just searching for something to print, and while most of these websites do a good job of adapting to a narrow mobile phone screen, the frustration comes from juggling tabs and switching between various sites. Therefore, my recommendation in this category is Thangs, simply because it's an aggregator of most of the other sites. When you first open Thangs, you will be prompted to log in, but hidden up on the top right is a button called Skip, because logging in and making an account is completely optional. The Home tab will display some random models it thinks you might like, but more realistically, you're going to be pressing on search and looking up something that you're interested in. And here is the beauty of things. All of the results that we're seeing come from all of those other file sites. They're all presented side by side instead of having to switch between tabs and tapping on one of them will display that site in an embedded browser inside the Thangs app. The important thing for me is that you're getting the full functionality of the original site, not a cut down version to suit the Thangs interface. So while the Thanks app doesn't add anything to these other sites, it also doesn't remove anything. Once you've found what you want to print, you could always download the 3D files to your phone, but I don't think that's very useful. So normally I would switch to my desktop that has the slicing software on it and go from there. Thanks does offer some other things like streams and leagues. This is of zero interest to me, but I guess it's a bonus if you're into that type of thing. I'm just happy with it simply as a fast way to search multiple sites for something I might like to print. Let's shift our attention to actually controlling our 3D printers. We're gonna start with Bamboo Lab printers because in my opinion, the ecosystem is made a lot richer by the addition of their app. The app of course is called Bamboo Handy. This app brings native and automatic print monitoring, including webcam feed to all Bamboo Lab printers. And conveniently in my opinion, notifications for when the print has an issue or just when it's finished. Let's have a brief run through in case you're not initiated with this app. We have a drop down menu to select any of our Bamboo Lab printers that are connected. We can then tap a button to initiate the webcam feed. And we have manual control over things like heaters and fans. If you select a printer with an AMS or AMS light connected, you'll be able to tap on this and see all of the loaded filaments. Beyond this, for each printer, we can access a full online print history. This means you can restart a print that you've previously completed without using the slicer or going to the machine. Perhaps one of the best features is the support integration. The printers will display a QR code if they need maintenance or attention, and the app can then be used to load instructions. You could do this with any QR code reader, but I'm glad they built it into the app. We can also access support tickets if needed. One part of the app that I rarely use, but is actually quite extensive, is its integration with MakerWorld, the 3D file repository, just like Printables or Thingiverse, run by Bamboo Lab. Not only can we browse and search, but we can also print directly from the app without visiting the printer. After checking out the model, we can tap on prepare to print at the bottom and then select our printer and a print profile from the top. We can then confirm the printer we're using, the bed, as well as the type of filament before finally tapping on start print, where the job will be wirelessly sent to the machine, ready to start without you going anywhere near it. 
There's a lot more built into this app than most users will ever use, especially if they're running their printers in LAN only mode, but I think that's good. I'd rather have too much than too little, especially when it's easy to just ignore the aspects I don't want. I think that sets the standard for control and integration, but don't worry, we have some great options for other brands too. We'll start with a Marlin printer that happens to be running Octoprint. And this is exactly the setup I'm running on my Prusa XL, partly because Octoprint is so good, and also because this way I can use whatever webcam I want and get a good resolution and frame rate. The option I've chosen here is called OctoApp, and it is truly outstanding. The first thing to understand is that there's three tabs to the interface and the app will change between them automatically. We start by inputting the IP address of our Octoprint instance. And assuming this is correct, the app will tell you to look out for a notification in the web interface. So from the web browser, we can click allow and then input our Octoprint password to confirm. Back in OctoApp, this will automatically be detected and progress forward to the connection tab. Mine only shows up briefly because it's set to auto connect, otherwise you'll have a big connect button. The second tab that we'll see is called prepare. And as the name might imply, it's all about monitoring and controlling the printer before we start an actual print job. Elements include manual controls, temperature controls, a webcam feed, a list of files to print, and shortcuts for things like the terminal. We also have shortcuts for opening the web interface, which will be embedded directly into the app. And as we can see, it's not optimized for mobile, so the app is a really good idea. The last tab, again loaded automatically, is the print tab, which is loaded when, of course, you are printing. As well as the webcam feed and progress bars, it monitors all of the temperatures and has some custom controls for tweaking things like first layer Z offset. All of this is fine so far, but what really sets this app apart is the documentation and customization available from developer Chris. He has a video, which I've linked below, explaining how to customize and get the most out of Okta app. Let's look at some examples of this. On the XL, it's picking up all of the tools, but also the temperatures for the individual bed elements. Fortunately, all I have to do is customize the temperature control and turn off any that I don't want. This allowed me to clean up the interface and not have a wall of different temperatures. You can also customize what appears and in what order on either of the two main tabs. This is a simple drag and drop interface. And for instance, I was able to set my preference to have my webcam feed at the very top for easy access. From the menu, if we tap on Octoprint, we can get a range of specific Octoprint commands that can then be pinned to the main tabs. For instance, here in the quick access section of the prepare tab, I'm pinning a command to shut down the Raspberry Pi properly, ready to power down the printer. OctoApp also shines in the amount of Octoprint plugins it's compatible with and can talk to. For instance, here I installed the Slicer Thumbnails plugin, and that changed the file list from looking like this to this, which is a small but welcome change. I also installed the OctoApp companion plugin for Octoprint, which will enable a live print notification, as well as a notification when the print is complete. Everything so far that I've showed, you can do in the free version, but what do you get for paid support? The main selling point is the fact that you can add more than one printer. Beyond that, however, there are extra perks like automatic light control, real-time G-code preview, additional capabilities when placing widgets, and more options when it comes to searching for files and file management. You also get Apple Watch support. You can do a subscription, but instead I went for a one-off fee for lifetime support. That's in Australian dollars, which converts to around $17 US. So that's Octoprint, but what about a printer run by Clipper firmware? Well, just briefly, OctoWAP also supports Clipper printers. To add a Clipper printer, we simply input the IP address. In most cases, no further information is required and OctoWAP will connect and display those same three tabs. I already had a print running, so it's jumped straight to the print tab. You'll notice up the top there that it says the companion plugin is missing. And if you tap on this, you'll be given instructions on how to install it for Clipper. And I did so with the automatic install script via SSH, which immediately enabled live notifications. One more thing, once you have unlocked Supporters Edition, you can swipe to the side and then with one tap, select any of your 3D printer instances. If you only run Clipper printers, there is another app called Mobile Raker that has more of a Clipper feel. Mobile Raker has a website where you can learn more about it doesn't actually say that it's open source, but it does say source available and that others can collaborate and contribute to the code base. So as you would expect, there is a GitHub page for the app. The first thing we need to do in Mobile Raker is to add our printer. And I'm doing the simple version here. That involves giving the printer a name and then entering the IP address. Assuming you get this right, you can click continue and then head to the dashboard. 
which has all of the features that you would expect. Up the top, we have our job status, and we can tap on more to reprint the last job. You'll also notice an e-stop icon in the very top right. Underneath this, we have temperature controls, which matches what you'd see in mainsail, a live webcam feed, manual controls for moving the axis, and shortcuts to things like quad gantry leveling. All of this is on the left-hand tab, we can now click the right hand tab and be presented with our macros and various controls for things like fans, LED pins and any other custom things you've got set up. If we tap in the lower right, we'll get yet another menu with things like shutdown, restart and access to services running on the Raspberry Pi. Although the overall feel is similar, it's just a little bit more specific to a Raspberry Pi and a Clipper installation. We also have access to things like the G-Code console and of course our file list in case we want to print from the app. I won't go into too much detail here, but there's plenty of customization options for appearance and the features on display. Like OctoApp, there's a companion that gets installed onto the Pi, and I did this quickly via SSH. There's three levels of notification you can have, progress bar, milestone, and as you're seeing up the top, a change of state. Like OctoApp, additional functionality can be unlocked if you become a supporter. Again, I went for the one-off lifetime payment, in this case, US $25. Perks include the ability to have multiple printers, customize the dashboard, have additional control of things like print queue, and a lot of visual customization too. And once you are running multiple printers, you'll have access to this overview tab, which gives you a webcam and status snapshot of each of your connected printers. I purposely haven't covered add-ons that grant remote access when you're away from your local network, because in my opinion, that's a whole other video. Very briefly, let's look at CAD integration. I know a lot of you don't like CloudCAD options, but in my opinion, this is one area they really shine. Fusion 360 is very popular, so let's have a brief look at their mobile app. For me, the minimum is to be able to be out somewhere, perhaps buying hardware for a project, and to be able to open up that file and take measurements and double check things. And although it's a little bit hard to navigate on a small screen, the Fusion app does have a measure tool that can achieve this purpose. As long as you land your input points roughly on the surfaces you're aiming for, you can then look at the X, Y, and Z coordinates to be able to get a more accurate measurement. In my opinion, the Onshape app is the leader here because not only can you navigate all of your files as well as recover critical measurements, but you can actually tap to expand the feature tree, go through all of the components that make up the model, and if you want, you can even edit them. Space on the screen is pretty limited, so this would work a lot better on a tablet, but again, it's just really good to have the option for that odd time that you might actually need it. To finish off, photogrammetry, and I'd very much like to invite some suggestions in the comments for this one. In case you didn't know, photogrammetry is when you 3D scan by taking a range of photos all around an object, and then use special software to construct a 3D model from these images. I think it would be handy to have a photogrammetry app on your phone that can send the files automatically to a cloud for processing. This is especially handy if you're out and about and see something you weren't planning on scanning. The app with the highest review scores that match my criteria is Magiscan. Here I'm using 360 degree snap, the most convenient mode. And I'm recreating a scan I did for this recording because my family was in the background of the first one. Basically, we put the object in the middle and we slowly rotate around it. And as you can see, if you rotate too quickly, you'll be prompted to move more slowly. And if you let the object stray from the center, this donut will prompt you to get it back in the middle. Eventually, you'll finish all of your rotation and the object will start processing automatically. Although I'm not sure at this stage whether it's processing or actually uploading all of the images to the cloud. All I know is that for this scan, it took around 15 minutes to complete this step. And when it did, it told me it would take 110 hours to complete, but if I paid for premium, it would be done in under 10 minutes. Premium has a couple of versions of a subscription and a one-off payment that is quite hefty at $350. It will give you unlimited scans and according to them, a lot faster processing time. Now my original scan said 67 hours, but it actually finished in under 24 hours. So let's see how good it is. On first inspection, it doesn't look too bad. But once we get around to one side of the face, we can see the transition between where the images started and finished isn't that great. Now with photogrammetry, it's garbage in, garbage out, so my pictures are partly to blame for this, and perhaps one of the assisted modes would have been better. We do have a pretty wide range of export options. I chose an STL, downloaded the file, and then transferred it to my desktop. Without the texture, we can see that it's just okay. It's gonna need a fair amount of post-processing work to be able to be 3D printable, unless we're actually looking to print a big pile of spaghetti. So yeah, suggestions please. 
That's the end of my list and I hope it was helpful. Let me know any good ones that I've missed that match my criteria down in the comment section. Thank you to my patrons for giving me some input on this. Thank you for watching the whole way through and until next time, happy app supported 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.